Okay, excellent. It's great to be here. Um, so it's also great to be uh, after Chris, who gave a fantastic lecture, which is a, a great start for my lecture. So uh, Chris was speculating about the long-term uh, vision and where Flash is going. And I can tell you what can, you can do today and what you can do tomorrow, okay? <coughs> and I will start by asking a question. When you want to drive very fast, which car will you use? Will you use a minivan or you will use a Ferrari? And the answer is very clear. You want a Ferrari for a cost of a minivan. <laughs> and Supposing I have a budget for a Ferrari. Uh, <laughs> if you have, uh, no. you're lucky. Uh, I do not have. And, uh, and this is the, the story about uh, Flash today. And, uh, and Flash is much beyond performance. There are many other benefits around Flash. There are many operational benefits, both in the data center cost, power, cooling, space, and also in the business side, you can do many more things with Flash. You can do to run more reports, have the IT organization bring more value for the cost for the uh, the organization, and not just spend the time managing the storage, spend the time configuring things, migrating things, but just g gain value from the uh, from the data, meet the compliance, SLAs, and of course, with Flash, it's much beyond performance. It's also about consistency of performance, and this is how you can always meet the SLAs. Now, if it's that great. Why everything not in Flash today? And of course, the answer is cost. And the main challenge of having all active data in Flash today is cost. And this is a report from Tunisia Group. So they asked the same question in 2013 and early this year. What limits customer from deploying Flash? And budget constraint, is the main barrier for deploying more, more flesh in the data center. But as uh, Chris mentioned, there are, there are many technology changes that helping flesh to become much more cost efficient. And if I'm, I'm looking at it, I think the main two that are relevant today are 3D NAND technology. And yes, Samsung announced a 3D NAND uh, with 48 layer flash uh, of 16 terabyte SSD. It will be available next year, much denser than HDDs. And the other one is TLC. And if you look at uh, the progress of hardware elements, HDD, CPU, you look also at uh, DRAM, all of them are improving according to Moore's law. And only flash at other dimension with 3D, TLC, QLC in, in the future. And this is why the density and the cost of flash is improving much, much faster than any other elements, hardware element in the data center. And the future of all flash arrays is to deploy these high density drives. And there is one caveat. These drives are coming with lower endurance and the architecture, the all flash architecture and the, any storage should know how to deploy these SSDs, high density SSDs with lower endurance. Now, let's, let, let's tackle uh, one at a time. Of, let's look at the, f I think basic, I think the two basic requirements of any storage system, which are uh, capacity and performance. So you want to buy a, a storage system and you have a capacity requirement and performance requirements. So let's compare a few architectures. So a scale up architecture, um, you can scale capacity until some certain limit, but you cannot scale performance. Why? Because the architecture, you have two nodes only two nodes, and the performance of the system is limited by the performance of two nodes. 
So the other approach is scale out. So you scale the system by adding compute together with uh, uh, capacity. And you can meet any performance needs. And in basically, uh, in theory, you can meet any capacity need. But the main issue of this architecture, that this architecture tend to be more expensive. Why is that? Because the density of capacity per controller is lower compared to a scale-up system. And if, if you look at the customer, so each one of you has a requirement. So for this specific requirement, a single scale-up system cannot meet customer need. And customer will need to buy multiple systems. Multiple system means high lens of storage, provisioning which is not efficient, and also new advanced features that are much less efficient. For instance, deduplication. If you have two systems, you need to store the same content twice instead of only one content in a single system. So you actually over-provision capacity when managing multiple systems, and you also have complexity of managing multiple systems. The other option is a scale-out system with a lower density per server, and this system you tend to over-provisioning performance. Because if you want to break the record of SPC1, yes, you will have like small capacity attached to each controller, and you will have many of them, and you can reach amazing performance. But many customers do not need this performance. They want performance for their needs. And in many cases, this system will over-provision performance. Over-provision performance means the customer is buying more nodes than it needs for the capacity which means more cost, unnecessary cost. And I truly believe and Caminaro believe in a system that can scale up and scale out. So you can meet any customer requirement in the most cost efficient way, any requirement of capacity and performance. And, and at the day of the purchase, customer is buying exactly what it needs without over-provisioning capacity and without over-provisioning performance. Now from there, if you need more capacity, you are just adding more shelf to the existing nodes. If you need more performance, you can also scale out by adding more and more nodes. And so it's not just the purchasing, it's also about efficiency of scaling the system in the most cost-efficient way. And this is why we believe a system should be able to scale up and scale out. And doing only one of uh, these capability means to compromise on cost or compromising on performance. Now, so I tackle the performance and scalability. The next thing I need to tackle is endurance because the fantastic drives that, uh, uh, the 3D TLC drives that are much, much lower on cost, and yes, they are much lower on cost. Compare, for instance, the, the numbers that uh, uh, Enrico presented, for instance. Yes, this is changing very, very, very fast, and, and the, these new technologies are helping us. For instance, we dropped the price by half in a year because of these new technologies. And uh, so our, our vendors are tackling the endurance uh, challenge. And what we see is that modern software-defined AFA architectures improve SSD endurance by 4 to 8x, in some cases even more than 10x endurance. How it is done? One uh, important element is inline data reduction. And inline is very important. Why inline is very important? Because if you are doing pro processing data reduction, you are writing the entire data, and then writing again the shrink version of the data. If you have inline, you are just writing the shrink data, of, uh, the, uh, the shrink uh, version of the data, which means, for instance, for if it's 5x data reduction, it means 6x better on endurance. You, this system also uh, balances the load evenly across all nodes. If you balance the load evenly across all nodes, you don't need each SSD to plan for the worst case. 
in, in addition to that, the way of writing to the flash in a very optimized way, the, the uh, <coughs> specification of these uh, SSDs is for random workloads. And, 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 uh, and all flash array can write in a much, much more optimized way. So for instance, the 3D TLC drives that are available today are coming with one write per day for five years. But if you're writing in a much more cost efficient way and much more optimized way and friendly way to the SSDs like writing large chunks, sequential, you can have 10x better data reduction and support 10 writes per day of the entire capacity. And what we see, we have statistics from customers. So we have an L-Shield system, it's our column system, that tracks statistics of how many writes are done to the system. And what we see that 97% of the customer are writing less than the entire capacity in a day. So if you have a system of 200 terabytes, you will normally not write more than 200 terabytes in a day. Okay, just to give you and, and if, for instance, we are buying SSDs uh, with one write per day, and with the optimization I was referring to, we are improving it to uh, between four to eight write per day, then we can support endurance uh, instead of five years, we can support endurance of, from, of more than 30 years. So endurance is not a problem, and you should not, if you have the right architecture, you should not over-provision endurance because it's the same like over-provisioning capacity and over-provisioning performance. It is unnecessary cost. So also over-provisioning endurance means un unnecessary cost to the customer. So if you have the right architecture, you don't need to over-provision. So let's talk about uh, our vision and mission as a company. So our vision as a company is to enable our customer to scale their business easily and cost efficiently. So the three pillars are scale, easy, and cost efficiency. And, and, and we believe it's critical because Flash is becoming the next, genera uh, next generation storage for active data. This is happening now. Yes, maybe in the future, like Chris said, it will also replace and uh, 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 other types of data. But for the active data, this is what we see today. And a system that can uh, scale and be cost efficient, uh, we, we believe that uh, this is a critical element in order, in order to really be a, a, a storage which is a, a storage for general purpose. Now, if we look at our solution, our average cost of effective capacity for user is below $1 per gig. And as I explained, how we are doing it, we are utilizing 3D NAND TLC SSDs. We're the first to utilize 3D MLC. Now we're, we're one of the first to utilize 3D NAND TLC SSDs. And with our endurance optimization, we don't need to do tiering between types of SSDs. We can have a system only with these SSDs and guarantee seven years uh, endurance warranty. As we see that the majority of the customers will have more than 30 years endurance. So endurance is not a problem anymore. So we guarantee also effective capacity because everything with flash is easier than HDDs except one thing, yes. We guarantee the endurance, yes, as long as you are under maintenance, we guarantee the endurance for seven years, yes. Okay, so as long as you're under maintenance? Yes. So you don't offer uh, the standard warranty of seven years? The, the, st the standard that we do is between one to five years, but you can ex extend it to seven years and we guarantee the endurance for, for seven years. Of and course. You swap out failed drives in that standard? Of, we swap our failed drive. We as long as you are in warranty, we swap failed drive. By the way, the failure rate of SSDs is much lower than HDDs. <coughs> much, much lower than S SSDs. I can share some statistics. We can discuss it uh, after, after uh, 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 this talk. Uh, so yes, we, we, are, we are swapping it. 
And we know that uh, you will not get into endurance issues, so under any workload, we guarantee seven years of endurance. If it will happen, of course, we will swap the drives, but uh, from our statistics, we, uh, we track the endurance of any drive in the field, and we see that uh, we are not close to it, okay? But, but we will swap, of course, if, if it also break for other reasons, not, not just about endurance. Um, we guarantee also effective capacity. So as I said, everything is easier with flash. Provisioning is easier. You don't, performance optimization, you don't need to do anymore. The only thing which is more complex with flash is capacity planning, because you need to plan according to the data reduction. And normally, many customers do not know upfront that what will be the data reduction. So what we are telling uh, customers is that we are sharing the risk with the customers. The average data reduction that we see in the field is close to 6 to 1, 5.9 to 1 data reduction. We guarantee to any customer 3 to 1 data reduction. We also supply tools. So you can uh, also, uh, we can run analysis of the uh, data set prior to the deployment and tell you what will be the data reduction. And we can guarantee this after running this tool. So normal, because normally it will be much above uh, 3x. And this makes very transparent pricing compared to many other uh, all flash arrays that will not uh, promise any data reduction, which is very, very critical to really uh, make sure that you know what will be the cost of, of the storage. And we believe for active data, making all flash data center is now a reality, both for production and for DR. Because a dollar per gig is a very, very cost, it's very competitive to hybrid array. In many cases, it's much more cost efficient than hybrid arrays. So, uh, and, and, uh, and we are, not just winning against uh, m many uh, solutions that are uh, uh, all flash, we are winning many deals ag against hybrid arrays, when in some cases, uh, and customer can gain the consistent performance benefit without the premium that they use to, uh, to pay for uh, all flash arrays. So few things that are about, uh, unique about Caminario. So one thing that I cover, we are able to scale up and scale out. So we can meet the performance of a customer, uh, capacity performance in the most cost efficient way. And customer can always only scale capacity or performance independently. Easy, I think consistent performance is always easy because you don't need to optimize the system. It's and everything in Caminario is non-destructive, all the operation. And we also have a very, very strong L-Shield. L-Shield is our column system. So uh, we bring value to the customer with utilizing uh, the L-Shield. For instance, if we see the customer reach is close to reach the capacity of the system, we are looking at the capacity trend together with the performance trend and we recommend the customer whether to scale up if is, uh, the customer is not close to the performance limits or to scale out if customer, we believe the customer needs more performance. And this is the type of service that we give with the advent and analytics that we are doing. Uh, cost efficiency. So we are deploying, always deploying the most cost efficient <coughs> NAND technology which is available. We are always the first to deploy this technology because we build an architecture which is very friendly to the SSD. So we can use SSDs with lower endurance compared to a few other uh, players. And uh, we guarantee capacity. And of course, with the full data reduction of inline compression and inline deduplication. Sorry. Yes. Okay, so first we have a way to turn off, but uh, in compression, for instance, if it's database compression, we, we see about, uh, about 40% to 50% extra compression ratio 
on, on database if it's Oracle or SQL compression. Uh, so normally the combination of the best compression is when you combine the uh, database compression with uh, the storage compression. If you don't want to, p p uh, uh, to pay extra for licensing, for instance, for database, in many cases, uh, you don't want to pay your license for more cores, then many customers decide to just use our compression and not the database compression and save on costs. 